This just in, Kentucky joining Utah and several other states banning transgender girls from competing in girls sports. This going down much like it did right here in the Beehive State. Kentucky's governor vetoing the bill and then lawmakers overriding that veto tonight. Now this is a debate that has been dominating state legislatures in the last two years. Yeah, so how do those bills match up and what influence did outside special interest groups have in Utah? KSL investigators set out to compare the proposals and see where Utah's new law fits in. This literally was a product of my pursuit. The national push to bar transgender athletes from girls sports began in Idaho in 2020. Republican Representative Barbara Ehart says when she heard about transgender sprinters winning girls races in Connecticut in 2018, she wanted to make sure that didn't happen in her own state. It dawned on me that I was the person that could do something and so I decided to pursue this. After her bill passed, other states were quick to follow, including Utah. You know, these girls, have a right to compete under Title IX with a fair playing field. Utah Honestly, Representative Kara Berkland first sponsored a bill in 2021 that failed, but this year her effort passed in the final hours of the session. And we have an obligation, I feel like, to get in front of it. In Idaho, Ehart consulted Alliance Defending Freedom, a conservative Christian legal group, on her bill, and they told her, I think we're going to take your issue on. Uh, it's not Knowing the special action. interest group had a role in bills across the country, KSL investigative producer Annie Knox and I wanted to see how closely the measures match up. Using software designed to check for plagiarism, we compared bills in Utah and 36 other states against the Idaho law, and we found a great deal of similarities. A 2021 West Virginia proposal is almost a carbon copy. You can see that from the language highlighted here. But the bill that actually passed was much less similar. Initial proposals in other states also mirrored large portions of the bill she introduced. Those similarities include word-for-word -word references to inherent differences between men and women and a basis for cisgender players to sue if schools don't abide. But Utah's bill was different. The state's 2021 proposal was a 9% match to Idaho's law. But the law that passed in Utah this year, just 1%. Even though Berkland says she talked to ADF. They did send me some model legislation and we made some drastic changes to it, like I said, um, and eventually just kind of went with our own path. For example, she says she wanted to allow transgender kids to be practice players for girls' teams, while ADF did not. Political scientist Matthew Burbank says it's no secret that lawmakers don't always craft their own proposals. And you kind of think, well, that's odd that, you know, both Alabama and Utah and uh, North Dakota are all debating the same piece of legislation. Fifteen states now have a version of the law in the books. Almost always it's coming through those channels of somebody pushing uh, model legislation. So why is it important to know who's behind the legislation? Well, Burbank says for one, it can be hard to know who's backing the effort financially. Given the nature of interest groups as opposed to campaign financing, right, knowing exactly how those are financed is not always clear. And while Utah's new law is focused on school sports, more is at stake, according to Jillian Brandstetter with the National Women's Law Center in Washington, D.C. This is critically an effort to keep the door open towards more harsh penalties. Penalties, she says, like a potential prohibition on gender-affirming medical care. Exclusion of transgender girls from sports helps the very extreme movement that is doing far, far worse harms to transgender people. Not so, says Ehart. It really is about protecting opportunities for girls and women. After Berkland's 2021 bill failed, lawmakers and advocates worked together to craft Utah's 2022 proposal. But we had a whole year plus of discussion of what would a ban look like and how far, how extensive would that ban be? But that compromise fell apart in the last hours of the session after Berkland says only an all out ban had the support to pass. But after participating in a year's worth of negotiations, Troy Williams with Equality Utah was saddened by the end result. He says several Republican lawmakers called him up with a similar message. I hate this bill. I don't want to vote for it, but the county convention's coming up and I'm fearing for my political seat. 
Williams notes that just four transgender students play school sports in Utah and says they deserve the same uh, opportunities the as their classmates. It's, it's moral panic, it's hysteria, and it's cruel. Alliance Defending Freedom declined an interview but noted it is standard practice for lawmakers to ask groups from across the political spectrum for feedback on legislation. Mike and Ashley, 